Hello, and welcome to another episode of Myths and Stories, a Destiny 2 lore podcast. Today, we are finally going to cover this, the, I started to say season, I can't say that yet, Myth, uh, episode, episode one, uh, the Phantom Menace, no, wrong episode, <laughs> uh, the Echo Menace, uh, that's, I'm calling it that now. Yeah. Uh so yeah, so this is this is the first so we've uh at the time of this recording we've hit what we believe to be the final story beat uh for the first episode, the end of Act Three. Um and that is uh does this one actually have a name, Myth? Is it just called Echoes? Yeah, it's episode Echoes. Episode Echoes. Mm -hmm. Echo, Echo, Echo. Not that type of Echo. Well, I guess that kind of Echo. Me echoes of memory, right? Like, yeah. So the, the thing that brought on this, this episode, uh, the thing that kind of started it off, was the end of the final shape. Uh, we, had, we went up against the witness. Uh, we, we somehow, by miracles, uh, defeated the witness. And when he started to... Uh, by killing all the the dissenters, but the the individual uh, um, consciousnesses that made up the witness, when we when we did away with those, it kind of caused him to start breaking apart and kind of like dissipating. Uh, well, all that darkness energy has to go somewhere because just like in this physical realm that we exist in, energy can't be created or destroyed; it can only be transferred. So. Uh, that was represented on the very end of it, on the very the after the um, excision. Uh, I think it's called excision, right, Myth? I think so. Yeah. But yeah, the the post raid mission, the the twelve man activity. Uh, when you are sitting on your, we are sitting on like the 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 edge of the helm, just kind of like just outside the the radius of like the aura that's emanating from the from the traveler, and these three little these three little lights kind of like pew and and go off and in, in, in different directions um those are kind of the 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 representation of the echoes that emanated out now this brings about questions what is an echo how does it work are we afraid of it can we feed it can we keep it as a pet probably not don't do that uh and what then is the um, again, I can't say season yet because it, it is still an episode that we know they're going back to seasons. What is this thing about? So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do the, the, the main story as best we can remember what myth and I looked, uh, and by myth and I, I mean, myth, uh, looked and we can't find like a summary of this thing <laughs> for like rough notes. Uh, so we're going to be doing a lot of this off of memory of, of like the events that happened throughout the season. Um, and we're just gonna we're just gonna kind of go roll with it. And we're gonna reflect off of, of different story beats and stuff like that. Uh, so myth, uh, let's start it off. Yeah. Uh, not only can I also not find a summary anywhere. I uh, I made the what is seemingly now mistake of taking all three of my characters through each of the acts as those acts were releasing. So I can't like go back and replay anything. You, either. you fool. <laughs> uh, but yeah, my hunter so, might be able to go back, but yeah. Yeah. So just, you know, bear with us. There may be a, a couple details here and there that we miss uh, for some of the earlier acts, um, especially, but we'll do our best. Uh, act one starts off with one of these little little lights, little echoes, as we learn they are called, uh, hitting Nessus. Uh, and, and like hitting, hitting, like yes. drill the hole through it. Yeah, like down to its core. Uh, and with that, you know, with that happening, with that, that thing hitting, and again, we, at the time, we have no idea what it is, uh, Burroughs its way through Nessus and fail safe as well as the Vanguard recognize that there is this huge surge of Vex activity in the wake of this object uh, coming to Nessus. And so we are sent to investigate like what's going on, what the heck happened. I, uh, and uh, we find the impact site and uh, we get, that same visual effect that like uh, the the 
you know, the Aurora that's coming yeah. off of the traveler effect of like light and dark. Um, and when we find the impact site, you know, fail safe uh, makes mention along the lines of like, okay, it wasn't a normal like comet or meteor. Cause if something like that hit with hit with that much force to burrow through the crust, like Nessus wouldn't exist anymore. <laughs> essentially, <laughs> that, was, that was kind of what I was thinking. I was like, I, I know a little bit about physics if something that had had that much force, the Nessus would have been completely oblit. There would be nothing left. It would just be dust and particles. Yeah. So, uh, needless to say, this is a, a very anomalous uh, object, whatever it is. Uh, and the Vex in the, in the area around the crater are very riled up. Uh, and we uh, fight them off. Uh, and as we are fighting them, uh, there is mention, I don't know if it's here or if, it, or if it's a little later, that the Vex are acting uh, very strange, yeah. uh, very unusual in their their movements. Uh, but well, clear- even when you're fighting them off there, they're mm-hmm. like protecting it. Yes. They start, they start putting in, they start building barriers, that, that Vex structure that you see, like the, the, the very squared off you know, stuff. They start building barriers to prevent you to, con- to continue on. And so you're you're almost having to like, you know, hack their network uh, by way of, of course, shooting them because <laughs> yeah. they 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 send in. I mean, they send in full full waves of stuff. They, you've got minotaurs coming in. You got which we've talked about this in our vex episodes, like the minotaurs, the goblins, the hobgoblins. They're very much kind of like the protector units, and then the the hydras are like the mines. Like they're like kind of like the people in charge or the the thing in charge. And they send several hydras of like, Hey, stop it. Like yeah. quit messing with this stuff. This is protected. And we're like, no, 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 no. You're Vex. You're bad. We got to get in here. Yeah. So it was, it was really interesting to see this kind of immediate, uh, protection, um, you know, protocol instinct from yeah. the Vex. Uh, and you you notice that the Vex in this uh, that show up all have these like rings of light around their necks. Uh, and they are, um, I think at this point in time, they are referred to as compelled or controlled, uh, yeah. like controlled goblin, uh, compelled hobgoblin, something along those lines. Uh, and they uh, are attempting to prevent us from from getting further into the site and i did i did actually quite like the mechanic uh in that was introduced in this where you have to like bounce the laser beam around the room to, to that get was, different things that was that cool. was tough because i didn't fully understand what i was supposed to be doing so there was a few times <laughs> i was getting a little frustrated with it i was like dude i'm shooting the damn thing what the fuck am i supposed to do and then about <laughs> about that time i'd angle it just right and I'd go oh it's going off over there well, what the fuck is over there that I got to hit? And so I'm like, I'm like trying to trace this around the room. Like, where the fuck is this thing going? So there's a few times you got to like double and triple bounce it. So yeah, that was, yeah. but that was neat. It was, it was this neat little, like, you know, you're trying to send a signal through these like different like gateways to like, let, let the system know, Hey, I'm a Vex. I'm allowed in. Yeah. So that, that was cool. But it ultimately, after we lower all the barriers we can, uh, eventually the Vex like, essentially just seal up the hole that the, yep. that the uh, echo created when it, when it hit uh, and leaving us, the guardian as well as fail safe uh, in this moment of like, what the heck is going on? Like what, <laughs> what is that? Never, Who are they? We've never seen, <laughs> well, we've, we've never seen Vex protect an area with such tenacity, right? Like even the vault of glass, they, they don't, like they, yeah, you had the 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 um, the minotaurs out front with the with the with the gate pads, and they protect it pretty well. But even like once you do finally get the the spire assembled and everything, and it opens, they immediately just drop and and retreat in. And now you're now they're trying to they're kind of playing backup. This one, they were very tenacious about like we are not letting you in here. This mm-hmm. is you are not getting access to this area. Yeah, so off the back of that, uh, we are uh, thrown into or, or is made available um, the first kind of seasonal episod- episodic activity. That that doesn't feel right. Uh, Episode. <laughs> <laughs> 
I finally got it into an episode, man. There you go. Uh, but so we're 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 brought into like the for lack of a better term, seasonal activity. Uh, and it it is very much a investigatory. It is like you are on Nessus, you are going through uh, different pockets of Vex activity, trying to collect data from those Vex about what it what is happening. Like what what is it that uh, is driving them? You know, what is this this thing that uh, seems to be having such a dramatic effect on their network? Um, and and this, this is the the battleground yes. uh, activity, right? Like, so where like you have different areas. Like, there's one where it'll, it, there's a bunch of like Elixney coming in. There's a bunch of Vex portals activating. There's another portion that you do that's like Cabal, and you're like chasing them from like power structure to power structure to try to shut it down. But all of this is still like Vex Vexy stuff is happening because like even the area looks like data latticed, right? Like it's yeah. super. Now, I, I will preface the battlegrounds technically happen uh, a little later. Uh, this is for that that breach executable. Uh, oh, activity, okay, okay, okay. Where I you're like you. going following. bouncing around to the vex towers and you know uh, gathering the the data moats and dunking them. That's and right. All that. That's right. That's right. I uh, and I it, to support our continued research into what is going on. Uh, we did have this this kind of fun moment of uh, bringing failsafe. Uh, I we didn't necessarily like transport her per se, but we made a connection for her up to the helm. Uh, she she even states like that's a lot of space to try to take up both yeah. both physically and digitally. <laughs> yeah, uh, but she can now access the helm and interact with us there and interact with like the systems of the helm um, as to to kind of be our. Uh, our point person for investigating what is going on. Uh, so all the data that we are gathering during breach executable is being transmitted to her to calculate, to try and, you know, devise what uh, the Vex are attempting to do. Uh, as the result of the data we gather in breach executable, I, uh, that then brings us to the battleground. I uh, gotcha. That's right. Now I'm remembering the line. The it, it, when you started saying data, now I'm starting to remember that. Like, oh, I would do anything for that data. Anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fail, fail safe's a little, uh, little, little, little. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't. I don't want to put the word here, so I'm not going to. She's a little <laughs> saucy and a little spicy for data. Apparently. Apparently. Uh. Yeah, there there's some interesting line reads <laughs> throughout the ones. throughout those those bits. Uh, but yeah, so we we are now um at the point where it's like okay, we've identified uh a entry point to get to whatever that anomalous object was that we think is causing all the issue, uh, and the beginning like the the first layer of that entry point is the first battleground that we were introduced to. Gotcha. Um, and yeah, in that battleground we're, co- we're going through and uh, we are finding that, um, you know, the Elixni are also trying to get in and muck about with things. And like, you know, they are also of the, the mindset of like, Oh, well, if something, you know, whatever tech the, the Vex are, protecting uh must be valuable enough that that we want that as well because that now would what, be useful for what us. What elixir have. are these? Are these like the remnant elixir that are the more of the fallen rather than elixir style? Like these aren't house yeah. light or something no. like that, right? No, this is this is house dusk, which is the kind of collective of what's left that isn't allied with us essentially. Right. That uh, e- that either isn't us or salvation. Yeah. The, yeah. the, whatever's left is house dusk and they're just kind of scrounging for anything they can get. Yes, very much so. Um, so we, uh, you know, we, we proceed through the battleground, uh, getting at least to the point of like, we, we meet resistance, of course, the, the, the whole way through, cause this is only kind of the first layer of burrowing down into what eventually will be the core of Nessus. Um, but while we're there, you know, we, we meet resistance. We discover like, uh, th- this is where it is that they mentioned like the Vex are using tactics they haven't used before. 
Yeah, uh, they're, they're developing like individuality. Right, and, and and there's a there's a line from Failsafe along the lines of um, like the Vex are retreating. They're they're yeah. using a tactical retreat, which uh, in in game, and I know some people have kind of made jokes at this is is brought about as like this big revelation of like oh they can walk backwards oh my god uh, <laughs> it's we're not retreating we're just advancing in a different direction right uh and but but, but that's what, still that's still unheard of from the vex like the vex once they start pushing forces into an area that are like this neat again it i, I bring it back to the idea of like the level of protection that they're doing here like mm-hmm. it it a, a tactical retreat is still a very um it's it's like a, it's it's a it's a um humanistic thing is what it really is cuz like the idea of a tactical retreat is like drawing back just enough to get your to get the opposing force to push in and then collapse in on them mm-hmm. like find some find some area that they can then collapse in on the vex don't think like that the vex just go i'm just going to send a billion more units like I, I'm just yeah. gonna overwhelm you with as many as I can send. Like I don't. I'm just gonna start warping shit in from the past, the future, the present. I don't care. I'm just gonna start sending more shit. And the fact that they've done this, the again, the idea of a tactical retreat. That means they're trying to prevent losses. Right. Like that. That means is that a, there is there is a fear of loss. There's a fear of loss, and there's a value placed on an individual vex unit. So. This is this is different. This is the, again, that's that individuality that's starting to to show itself there. Of like the Vex aren't aren't acting like Vex; they're acting like people. Like this is a true evolution of of what's happening with the Vex. Which again, any anything that that involves the Vex that involves any type of evolution is a bad thing. Like again, the Vex as a whole are bad, but they're a contained bad right now, or at least up until right. this point. They've they've been a thing like okay they're there we can contain them we can kind of keep them occupied like we will figure something out eventually this is now a whole new level of like and even Osiris throughout this whole thing is like I've never seen this before I don't know yeah. how to combat this I don't know what's happening yeah so far beyond the realm of what they have seen the Vex do before and, and by because by nature of the Vex you know having like the sole purpose that they have had for for the most part that has exist that has made them very dangerous absolutely uh dangerous more by their all encompassing numbers and yeah. uh, endless persistence more than anything uh, but it has also made them to a certain degree predictable like you right. the, there's there's an understanding of what their motivations are and therefore what they what their likely response will be to a event and now that that predictability has been removed there's there's this this feeling of like we don't necessarily know how they're going to respond anymore right Uh, like we need to rethink our engagements with them altogether yep uh and it is off the back of that battleground that uh we are then uh, given access to another uh, new activity by the name of Enigma Protocol. Uh, and this is the one where we are actually infiltrating into the network, uh, similar to how we did in Season of the Splicer, in a way. Uh, we're in that same, like, cyberspace uh, area. Um, and here we are uh, going through the the Vex network to obtain information about, like, okay, what in this network is causing them to to make these changes in this way? Uh, and during your time here, there are a few places where uh, there are a few like safety rooms, uh, and those safety rooms have these pillars of data in uh, the corners of the room. Uh, and if you go up, and I, it was very confusing how it was presented. So I, un- <laughs> yeah, I definitely understand people maybe just not even realizing this was a thing. I. Uh, but if you walked up to those pillars, you would have the opportunity to interact with one. And then if you weren't like really paying attention to things on your screen, it seemed like nothing happened. And then like 10 seconds later, you could interact with another one and rinse and repeat. Uh, but what was happening during those you know 10 seconds or so in between 
was in the upper left of your HUD uh, above the timer that was running because Enigma protocol was timed. There were uh, little transmission messages that were coming through uh, as text only uh, that were uh, essentially queries that were being asked to the VEX network. Uh, you know, and it was a, a case of like querying events that had happened from essentially the golden age to now was kind of yep. the, the take I got on it. Yep. And in, in, in these rooms too, like all over the room, there are little bubbles and yes. they, every bubble has something in it. Like it's, it's, there's a shit ton of stuff in there. Like there's paintings, there's lamps, there's desks, there's, you know, bird cages. There, there's just, there's shit everywhere. And it's, it's a really kind of disorienting area. Cause mm-hmm. again, this is inside the network. This is, we're literally like, like while you're in, um, um, God, I've already forgotten the name of it. Enigma, Enigma protocol. Yep, Enigma protocol. Enigma, Enigma protocol. Enigma protocol. That's a hard set of words. <laughs> uh, while you're in there, you are literally like zeros and ones. Like you're in the network. You are, like, you know, you're 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 physically represented there, like because of video game. But for all intents and purposes, you you've troned up. Like you're you're running around Tron style in their in their network, just like what Myth was saying back in season of the Splicer when we used to hack it and, and traverse the Vex network there. So to see um, physical representations of stuff that exist in the world, like fully shown off here is off-putting because again vex doesn't care about that shit yeah a, a, a vex doesn't care that that's a desk it doesn't care that that's a lamp it doesn't care that that's a bird it just says that's not vex it needs to be vex turn it into vex that's it that's the entirety the entire thought process of, a, of an individual vex make that vex not not oh identify this as chair oh this is used to sit on cool that's neat can I make it a Vex? Sure. Let's make it a Vex. No, it is, is, it's a full-on single thought. Is that Vex? Yes, no. Change it to Vex. Full stop. So again, to see that here and then to see those queries coming through, it was an odd, another odd thing to be like, well, who's querying the, the Vex network? Like the only yeah. people that have really kind of have that knowledge is like Mithrax and us. And previously Asher, but obviously back, you know, way back uh, um, when Asher was was became one with the network. Um, yeah, he like we haven't seen anything from him recently. So for this to be an outside query or presumably an outside query within this space, it was very odd. It was very off putting. Yeah. And what what was interesting is as we were progressing through the uh through enigma protocol and and looking at each of these these queries uh we could see them evolve uh yeah. so the the initial ones um and i do have some of these pulled up so like the initial one was query uh run a query on this rabbit toy uh and the response is command rejected i uh, and it the Im- implication is the query is being asked by somebody in the VEX network that is not recognized by the VEX network. Yep. Um, so the query rabbit toy. Uh, and then the VEX are responding command rejected expel unknown variable. Uh, another one query. Basically turn it to VEX. Yeah. Or, you know, get rid of it, turn it to VEX. Yep. It, need, it needs to go away. Uh, next one is query bowl of rice command rejected integrate rogue consciousness so that was one of the first one that was a weird one to me so rogue consciousness i think the the first attempt is them like get rid of this unknown variable delete it yeah uh this one is them is the vex network saying like okay we can't delete it make it vex integrate this rogue consciousness that exists within our network to make it a part of the network still going with that mentality they're not even trying to identify it no. They they are just like, is it Vex? Yes. Go okay, continue about business. Is it Vex? No. Delete it. 
can't be deleted, turn it into VEX. They're still following a very basic structure here. Yeah. Uh, and the, the next uh, command is run a query on this wine. Command rejected. Uh, transfer vulnerable data. So it looks like the VEX are either trying to like transfer this rogue data away or the VEX are saying like, oh, it's getting more access than we want. Try and like lock that down or transfer that that access point away so it can't get to it. Sure. Um, and I, we get a couple of dialogues from Osiris uh, at the end of the mission uh, who comments like the Vex are amassing golden age tech. They're decrypting, analyzing, and liquidating it. Um, and says like some of these are just simple objects like there's no strategic value to these only sentimental value i uh, which he finds odd understandably yeah. so i uh, and then he continues on that like i uh, ikora pops in and references you know this can't be an attack by a collective like this this can't be the vex collective doing this uh, and failsafe uh, agrees that this is the effort of an individual trying to find something out. And so Osiris poses the question of, well, who infiltrated this then? Exactly. Because again, uh, the only people that we know that have the knowledge to do this are Mithrax and us. Yes. Uh, and it is, uh, we get a couple other commands here as we go through. Um, at the very end, so there's those two rooms. The first room is the pillars where it's constantly like reject command, reject command, reject command. Uh, and now in the second room, similar queries are being made. Query sunflower, query sunrise, query art. And now we're seeing command accepted. Command accepted, command accepted. Uh, so we're seeing an evolution here of like this this rogue being trying to get access to data and being rejected. And now stuff has changed to the point where their commands are being accepted instead. Sim similar to what we saw uh, when Asher was doing it, right? Yeah. Where he's like, he's, he's literally like reprogramming. He's like the first line or something that was like, you know, stop integration. Uh, you, we, me. Yes, yes, yes. All this. Make make access point scry or, or what does he say? What do you? I think he starts off with like scribe or something like. That. He's like, no, make it Asher or something like. He he, <laughs> he like he elevates his own status for himself. Yeah. I'm like, of course you would, you little shit. But then <laughs> but then he starts being able to break through the the protocol because again from the beginning the Vex are trying to turn they they see they see somebody accessing they go okay well this isn't us it that means it's not Vex start integrating it start making it Vex. And he starts he starts putting in those commands of like no 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 make the system think I am a vex therefore it won't it won't integrate me it won't it won't kick me out or anything like that then he can learn as much as he wants so we're seeing the same thing here of something is trying to break into the system the vex recognize it as as an outside source try to try to delete it try to integrate it finally just like okay we'll, we'll just push it off into somewhere. And then now at the second half, we're starting to see integration. Now, the only thing that changes between the first room and the second room is we fight a giant Vex Minotaur. Do you remember the name of it? I don't, I'm afraid. That's okay. I, I was curious if, that, if the name of the Vex Minotaur had something to do with, with the acceptance now. Because I'm that curious... I'm curious if, you know, this Vex Minotaur, because again, Minotaur is a defensive unit. It's designed to like, it's it's basically like your firewall, right? Like it's designed to keep people out of shit. Right, yeah. Um, especially in, in this digital space, that would be a physical representation of a firewall. So I'm curious if whatever saw us in the network at the midway point now started, or, or you know, knew that like the vex was going to throw more shit at us to try to like block us out we came to this you know quote unquote firewall this minotaur and then by us defeating that firewall now also allowed access for the outside point 
to be able to access this. So I'm curious as to how much we accidentally might have helped the outside source. Yeah, I I could absolutely see that as a as a, a possibility, a, a very distinct possibility. Because um, are the Vex in here also the compelled? I can't remember. They are. Uh, they are. They're all wearing yes, collars. They're, They've they're all, all got wearing the... collars. Okay. Um, even even in week one, they're all wearing collars. I uh, now I don't remember if that boss is. I feel like I remember it. I feel like I remember. And again, I could be crazy. I've been known to make random shit up in my head. But again, if these are all compelled, then that means that something with the echo had to have been doing something here. And then either a that Minotaur truly was just a firewall to keep us out. Or that Minotaur had a two-part purpose that was trying to keep us out and the outside access out, and then by us defeating it, accidentally let the outside access in. Yeah, so uh, I did find a... uh, I did find a a video while we were here um, of someone fighting that boss. Uh, And it was uh, Enigmatos... The indecipherable proto mind uh, was the what name. What the fuck does that, that mean? boss? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Can you uh, break that down for five seconds? Those are big words, man. <laughs> however, interestingly enough, based on the gameplay footage I'm watching, that boss did not have a collar. Okay, so then it's because it didn't have a collar, it was trying to keep both sources out. Yes, that's I, I that's think my so. that's that's my assumption here. Is that whatever was tr- like the Vex have now recognized? Okay, this I'm I'm getting attacked from two different fronts. I'm being attacked inside my own network by these guardians that are that you know the 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 uh, God I can't think what what word they they use for it because the guardians are like paracausal. They're like a they're like a, right. a null state. They're, 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 they're not even like a null state. Like they don't, they, they have no concept of understanding it. They're like, okay, well we've fought these things before and we know we can do something with them. Let's throw this at them. But at the same time, there's this outside source trying to, this individual source trying to hack in. And so now it's like, okay, well let's start shutting stuff down. Let's start trying to redirect stuff and we'll just, we'll just, shut it all off at, at, at a central point. And then by us being paracausal and being able to make our own fate to be able to take that Minotaur down now, oopsies outside source gets in. Yeah. And I, I think that might be, uh, that might very well be the case. So when I, when I do a search for, uh, Anigmatos, uh, which appears to be a made up word as far as I can Yay! tell. Yay. Uh, like I can't find a direct correlation. It's, it's not some Greek god or some shit. <laughs> right. Uh however This was the Greek god of data data collection and data pre- data loss prevention. That didn't exist back then, buddy. <laughs> You're making shit up now. <laughs> yeah. However, uh enigma, uh, enigmatos is a is a word and considering this is enigma protocol, um Enigmatos is uh, the translation of complex data into clear patterns and trends. So, okay. spitball in here, spin foil hat. This could be the the Vex were running the Enigma protocol to try and understand what this outside consciousness was, so they could defend themselves against it. They had the proto mind, a prototype mind. De, you know, created for the purpose of orchestrating this protocol, sure. and the protocol itself was slowly being taken over by, you know, the echo of control by those collars, and the boss, this proto mind, was like the the was that final stand, uh, was the one leading the efforts of the Vex trying to understand and eventually get rid of this threat. And we remove that barrier. Yeah, I like it. That's that's in my head. That's what's happening now. That's canon. It, it makes sense. It does. It does. It really does. I also love the way that like you discovered that mission. Like yes, when you when you first land on Nessus that that first week, there were these like little images that like when you went up to them, they disappeared, and you were like, "What the fuck is this?" But if you stood, I think if like if you interacted with one of the images, like if you got up to it and, and, and interacted, you could go to another image 
and like if if you're at the second image um without interacting with the first it 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 did that same message in the corner of your screen but it was all garbled it was all just bullshit letters and numbers and just garbage but if you went to the first one and and interacted it would give you like like uh i can't remember what the buff it give you a little one minute buff to yep. where then if you go stand at the next one now it now it's you're seeing actual commands like like show place like go to tree go to miss go to whatever and so then when you look on your map you're like oh there's this place that has those proper nouns in there let me go there and then that's where it was like okay now follow path like go through triangle you're like oh my god what the fuck is happening it was the discovery of this was really really cool like i this was another one again similar to the asher mission that i just stumbled upon uh when i first discovered it and when i looked at it i was like what the fuck is this like when i saw the jumbled letters and i was like okay there's got to be something here that's doing something so then when i saw the the point next to like where you drop in the 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 transmat zone interact with that go to the second one was like oh i'm being told something and those are like all over nessus and they all direct you to the same spot and then when you get to that spot it directs you further deeper into into nessus and then boom here's this enigma protocol mission kind of running it, uh, seemingly in the background right like that's mm-hmm. it's it's so hidden in in nessus in a physical location access point that it did seem like what, what you were talking about like somebody's been trying to access this stuff for a while and they've been the vex have been trying to understand it and isolate it and created this sub mine and subroutine to try to stop it and then we happen to stumble i say we happen to stumble upon it but I mean, like you said, we were literally led there by yeah. visions of <laughs> who we will later know to be the conductor. Yeah. Uh, so, like, yeah, it it makes sense. It That's makes starting to add up now. That like, we we were the the instrument used to break down those so, barriers. That's so messed up now that I think about it, because that means that like if we hadn't found that, and we hadn't stumbled across that. The 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 conductor might not have been able to get in there and do whatever they wanted to do potentially now the the conductor still had control over some vex already by sure. nature of us seeing the collars but that may have been the access point to like the vex network as a as a greater whole oh sure 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 like the main like now you're in the trunk lines now you're like yeah. you've got the whole you've got full full system access now yeah 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 well that like i said the idea of us being used I, I don't know. I really like that idea. I really like that idea that like the bad guy saw us and was like, Oh, well, let me kill two birds with one stone. Let me, yeah. you know, send this, let me lead them there. And then, you know, if they, if they die, cool. Now they're out of my way. If they don't die and they kill the thing, now I've got access. I win no matter what. Oh my God, dude, that, that added a little depth there that I wasn't, I wasn't seeing before. Now it, I'm, I don't know. It's got me, got me a little, got me a little happy. Got me a little yeah. giddy. No, I, I like that it. that is cool. I was not something I picked up on either until like right now, thinking back. On yeah, it, like, yeah, yeah. No, they absolutely were directing us to to go there. Uh, yeah. So, uh, we we discover all this info. We identify that like there is a singular person, thing, something behind these queries, behind what is what is happening here. Uh, but we don't have any more information than that. Uh. And uh, the people trying to help us figure all this out has been Osiris, Ikora, Failsafe, Saint-14. And because they all have their own various interests or interactions with the Vex on some scale. Uh, and we have a couple weeks of like, uh, I think there's one one week of just kind of like gather data kind of stuff. Yep. Uh, but the, the act ends up um, reaching its conclusion for Act 1 with saint going mia yep. uh saint is his left he's been investigating alongside of alongside us and he's he's just not responding and it's not that his like calm signal can't be reached he's just not responding to to hails yeah i uh, and obviously this is very worrisome i uh, for poor. osiris especially <laughs> i was gonna say poor osiris can't catch a break with this man <laughs> Uh, and so we, you know, we identify like where he is, uh, which is, um, in, in Nessus f- kind of at the end of what ends up being the end of the battleground. We, we do the battleground once more, essentially, or a variation of it. Uh, and we discover Saint, uh, in this, this room on his own 
with uh, Word of Dawn has been cast, and there are like Vex kind of stationary all around him, and you know probably half a dozen or so uh, of the holograms of the conductor, the same holograms we had been seeing elsewhere in missions as we were progressing through yep. uh, this story. And they're, they're kind of like surrounding him and we clear out the Vex, the holograms disappear and word of Dawn drops. And we see Saint is now also wearing a collar, the same one that uh, most of the Vex are wearing. Um, and he's kind of like muttering to himself, uh, while, you know, while we are observing this and Ikora transmats in as well. Um, and Saint is saying things like, uh, the real Saint is dead. I'm just an imitation. I, and I, you know, Ikora is, is trying to get through to him. Like Saint can, can you hear me? Like, are you there? And he, he's not seeing us, ignoring us. He's like, I'm not a person. I'm just a copy, a copy of a copy of a copy. Uh, and to add some context for anyone that wasn't around for us saving Saint uh, and, and don't necessarily know his full story, uh, A, we have an episode on uh, yeah. a series on Osiris and Saint where we explain yeah. some of that. But the, the long and short of it is... Um, Saint-14 entered the infinite forest in search of Osiris and died. Uh, we, with Osiris, used a time machine sort of thing uh, to access different periods of time within the infinite forest uh, to find Saint-14 uh, at multiple points in time and prevent his death so that he could return. And and not be, you know, not be KIA. Uh, what Saint is being told here, presumably by the conductor, is essentially like, no, the real Saint died. What they saved was a simulation. What they saved was an approximation of who Saint was uh, that, you know, calculated by the Vex. Uh, and, you know, you you shouldn't exist. You're not You're not the real person. You're just... You're just a, a pretend person. Uh, and he is more susceptible to this level of control, and we see that collar on him, because exos are created with radiolaria. Yep. So the same Vex milk that powers the Vex, a transformed version of it, yes, but still a version of it is what makes all exos run. And presumably this was enough that it was an access point for the conductor to, to exert some level of control over Saint in this moment. Uh, and he continues to, to kind of talk to himself and says, like, a new golden age is coming, free from falsities like me. Uh, and Ikora eventually you know, tells him like, come on, big guy, Osiris is waiting for you. Uh, and that's, that's kind of that, that phrase that uh, snaps him out of the control collar, but his head has still very much been messed with. Oh yeah. And I, uh, we, you know, he's out of the control collar. He transmats out. I, uh, and we re we, you know, reconvene. I, uh, on the helm with Saint and Ikora and Osiris now. Uh, and they're they're asking Saint like what happened, like what, you know, what what was going on. Um and Saint goes on to explain, and I think this is the first time we hear the name the conductor. Yep. Uh but he he essentially tells them that um you know the 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 vex the mind the conductor that interfaced with him i spoke with a voice which is not something vex have done before uh and he was he wasn't able to resist the commands that it gave again radial area in in an exo um he said uh it 
connected to my mind, and it called itself the conductor. Uh, it didn't care about our plans. Uh, so it, it telling us that the conductor it isn't necessarily like isn't trying to interfere with our operations do, doesn't care doesn't care yeah. about everything that has happened up till this point uh, they have their own motivations um, and he goes on to say that you know this conductor measured saint's humanity measured his legitimacy i uh, and decided that he was not the real saint uh, that he was not the the true quote unquote saint, um, and saint goes on to say like uh, the conductor said that uh, the real saint fourteen was not meant to live. Uh, that and speaking to Osiris that like the saint fourteen that stands in front of you that you love is nothing more than a forgery. Uh, very very like existential crisis uh, oh, it going was. on. It like like it shut him down like that. If if I'm remembering correctly, that was like the end of the of the first act story beat. Like yeah. he he just like he's like I need to be alone. Like please just leave me alone for a while. Like he really gets shut down by this, and he and Saint sees it a lot too, or, or Osiris sees it, and then Osiris is like I I know how he is. He's gonna be this way for a while. Like. We, like I want to help, but I know I've got to leave him be. I've got to let him think it through and stuff. Like everyone is genuinely worried for him. Like it's it's a it 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 was kind of freaky, honestly. Like it it's to be told that you're like you're not real. Like yeah, ha, like and 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 to be to be so believable to be told that you're not real. Like yeah, that that fucked with him. No, it 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 was. It was a really, so I thought that act one, you know, people had their own opinions about the pacing uh, of the, the acts in general throughout the episode, but act one coming off of it, I, I was really like, kind of, I, I was very interested to see like, okay, where is this going? Yeah. Like th this, we it had kind of dark real quick. Yeah. Like the. We we started with like, hey, random things on Nessus. Uh and it, that evolved into like Vex are acting weird. Vexing or Vex are having ideas that seem to point at some level of like individual value. Uh and then got into you know, this this existential realm of, you know are you real? Is any of this real? Are we all just to simulate like, you know, the, this, this level of, uh, of questioning, um, that ha we had skirted before with some of the Vex storyline stuff. And like, especially with, uh, you know, the Ishtar, um, you know, Maya and her group and the like 200 and 225 copies, 227. something like that. 227 copies that were you know were just simulations that flooded through the vex network uh like we had touched on some of that but to see it enacted in such a personal aspect and uh for it to have a a, a effect on a like relationship like this um was it just it, it brought it about in a different on a different level yeah so, but yeah, that, that is the, the ending of act one is essentially like, there's Doom a conductor out there. Yeah. There, <laughs> there's a conductor out there that is, you know, the, the one responsible for all of this and they've really fucked with Saint's head and now Saint doesn't which know is, if he's real. <laughs> which is, which is truly crazy. Again, emotionally, it was truly crazy because you're talking about coming off of the final shape, right? Like humanity is saved and not, not the universe is saved right like we defeated the witness like thank god we can now breathe for a second and now we're starting to have like attacks on individuals of like you know now we're starting to create dissension within not not dissension we're starting to create uh uh ex existential crisis and and kind of like you know people shutting down mentally um with 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 you know with with saint 
um, to now, like everyone's starting to be like, well, this echo has got to be something bad then. Like it's like, whatever it is, it's definitely bad. Yeah. And, uh, and we, in, we at least have a name now we have a, a the conductor, yep. which is again, still going off of that, that darkness stuff, right? Like the, that chorus conductor thing. And we've heard that several times throughout destiny. Um, obviously with the witness, like that's a prime source. Uh, but also on Neomuna mm-hmm. with uh, a certain group of Golden Age Collapse survivors. The yeah. Maya Sundaresh's team of herself, uh, Chioma Essi, uh, and the other people that we can't ever remember their names because they never mentioned again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I feel bad because I, I know that there were like five and I can't ever remember the other three. So but definitely yeah. the ones in the forefront are always Maya and Chioma. And Chioma. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we, we've seen this conductor and chorus kind of idea before, uh, tied to the veil, tied to Maya, uh, tied to the witness prior. And so like it, get it, at this point in the the story, I feel like there's more than a few people that were going like, okay, the, there's a Maya connection here. Either yeah. Maya is the conductor, or she she's related in some way, uh, and that seemed pretty. I, I would say obvious at this point um, that like this this would make sense for her to be involved. So we enter Act Two uh, with a cutscene. Uh, it is a cutscene that I found on one level to be really, really cool. Uh, like the cutscene itself was, was very well made and, and, uh, visually was, was really cool. Uh, was this the one where it shifts from like a static image to a static, not, not, not a static, but a static 3d thing. It wasn't yeah, actual it's, like, it's like your, uh, this is the one where it's like, um, it's showing, uh, like statues yeah, yeah, of yeah, people yeah. and then kind of zooming around and yep. it shows the hologram of the echo actually entering Nessus uh, and whatnot. My, my only gripe with this cutscene, which is the same gripe that I think a lot of people, the community had at the time is we are given information in this cutscene that is used throughout the rest of the story without any justification for how we know that now. I uh, oh. like there there's maybe a argument to be made that like we've been able to talk to Saint a little bit and he learned some things while he was under control but I uh, technically speaking the the word echo of control has never been brought up until Ikora mentions it in this cutscene that the oh. echo of control landed on Nessus and I uh, it was available for anybody to find, and it. And there's grants... no like, there's no like uh, lore entry on like a gun or a or a piece of armor or something that shows like, oh, the hidden, deter de- deciphered some Vex network shit, and they've come to call it the Echo of Control, and da, da, da. like, there's nothing like that anywhere. Not that it is the not that it, it at ugh. not that is at the top of my mind, like no, nothing. I don't remember reading anything that was an explanation for that. Uh, All right, Bungie, you get one, That's your <laughs> one janky. What the fuck? It, it was kind of a like, Hey, this thing landed. And I guess they could imply they, based on what they had seen from the, the Vex and from Saint that like, okay, it's this, exerting control. Yeah. This, so this item allows, the allows but then the term the, echo doesn't really, was Echo ever, even the term Echo, was that ever used before? Even at like the end of Final Shape or anything like that? I'm trying to remember if they if they, if they coined the term books. Echo at the end of Final Shape or not. Because then that's, that's going to be a thing going forward with each other episode then, right? Yeah. Like if this is an Echo of Control, then we're going to have, you know, an Echo of something and then an Echo of something. And so... Yeah, that brings about the question, like, what are those going to be called? Like, obviously, we'll see them with the next acts if, if that's what they are and that's what they're called. But again, like, to your point of, like, to just kind of, like, arbitrarily grab a name out of the air and assign it seems odd. But I, I'll, I will 
I you know what I I'm always a pessimist, but I'm gonna take the op- I'm gonna take the optimist route here, uh, and I'm gonna say that like either Ikora's hidden because the fact that Ikora used it, like I feel like she would be the True. main investigator with the hidden and stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna give I I said you get one bungee. You know what? I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt, and I'm gonna say that the hidden found something. And and then like with something within the Vex network, or they somebody got an access point or something, and started seeing this echo of control being called out. Uh, so yeah, so you you get you get one bungee, and I'm I'm gonna give you this one, but you got to come up with a better reasoning next time. <laughs> yeah, I just, just grab I, a name out of thin air. I would have liked to see some in-game explanation as to how I mean how they decided on the name, sure, but also how they knew. I think the big thing for me was. Uh, Ikora is explaining in that cutscene that like this uh, echo is a uh, is a a piece of the witnesses' victims is the memories of the witnesses' victims made into like a manifest object, and that that just how do, how do they know that right like <laughs> I I would love to see how that conclusion came about and maybe it is as simple as like you know the the hidden or you know this is theoretical but we believe that this is most likely what has happened yeah just something not not just like this is info we now know because reasons now Uh, reference that info for the rest of the episode right well you know minor gripe but it was one that that kind of made me like kind of made me think i missed something somewhere yeah same don't worry we nobody missed anything we're all just (laughs) as confused as you guys are yeah but you do better Uh, so the um you know we're we're introduced to this idea now that we have a name the conductor we have a like a person now to point our uh our aggressions at <laughs> i suppose yeah shoot uh, it <laughs> heal it with bullets <laughs> that's how everything works in destiny everything in destiny is solved with, i mean we we saved freaking two of the two of the taken no all three of the taken Techions with bullets. <laughs> yes, by healing Please them don't with kill my sisters. <laughs> Save them with bullets. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we we get in now into Act Two of the story. I uh, and here we um are diving into another battleground. This is kind of layer number two, where we're beyond the surface and now like burrowing between, you know, the crust and the mantle to get to the core of, uh, of Nessus. Uh, and this is where we truly kind of meet and, uh, defeat the house of dusk, uh, operatives that are, are attempting to recover, uh, the echo or, you know, anything they can use, uh, as, as weaponry. I, and we are fighting uh one of the bosses here is Calix the Baron of House of Dusk. Uh so that tells us for sure this is House Dusk, but it is interesting that House Dusk has kind of gotten its shit together enough to yeah. start to form a traditional Elixni hierarchy. Yeah. Uh, we've got a baron, which yeah. means I'm assuming we've got like an archon and like I yeah. would think so. Yeah. What the hell is going on here? <laughs> so does that mean we have a Kel? Like, <laughs> right? Has House Dust organized out like kind of out of nowhere and just been like, oh, yep, we're back. I mean, granted, we've left them alone for a while at this point. Like, that's you true. Know, outside of the the few cases where we cross paths, uh, and we don't necessarily know that how you know this isn't to say House Dusk is you know has this this huge population increase or anything. It's just they're starting to organize now. Uh, yep. in in a more in more ways than just survive yep i uh, and so we we fight off uh this baron and uh immediately after the um baron is is fought off or not immediately after but we we progress through uh cuz that's kind of like the halfway point boss of that battleground um and we progress through to fight off uh another um giant minotaur at the very end I uh, and this minotaur is uh Camarion, the radial overseer. Uh Ooh. is their boss. Uh boss name. 
We got some uh, fancy names going on here. I know. I uh, and Camarion apparently. I uh, generally speaking is a uh, name that translates into fortune, health, spirituality, um, idealistic. Is kind of the the general takeaways from not, from not that. Chim- not Chimera is like multi headed thing like no multi not Chimera. Uh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Chimerian. Chimerian. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So slight, slightly different. Um, but what is interesting about that name, uh, that name being like fortune, prosperity, all that stuff, you know who else's name is uh, a name of a goddess of fortune and prosperity? Medusa. No. Lakshmi. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> shit. That's, that, that's Hindu, right? Or is that? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Lakshmi bitch. is the Hindu I never goddess. Put two and two together there. Oh uh, my god. So this is yet another hint that like yeah, yeah. Maya is involved. <laughs> Maya is involved. <laughs> like spoilers. Again, uh, another one that's that's revealed through the through the veil containment um, uh, bits that were post uh, Lightfall. Uh, Maya created Lakshmi as like a duplicate of her um, to have somebody to like help her integrate the the veil into the cloud arc and and upload everyone there and save everyone um and then at some point in time maya disappears uh presume i i want to say chiomi found her dead or something in the chair yes and yeah. then like lakshmi was the only thing left and so they like they essentially snatched her up and like dumped her like one of the cloud shards just dumped her off on on earth and was like that's not our problem anymore yep like get rid of this um, but then still followed through and made the cloud arc. Like, what? <laughs> to be What's fair, I don't know here? that Chioma was around by the time. I think they Chioma made the might have been dead arc. there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that yep. that that was like many generations of cloud striders later. Yep. Uh, yep. Was when all of that happened. So yeah, uh, the Lash, the Lakshmi, and and it's it's interesting too because all throughout the references of that Lakshmi that was dropped off, it's only referred to as Lakshmi. Whereas the Lakshmi that we knew as future war cult leader was Lakshmi two. So presumably if that was the same Lakshmi, then it was a reset mind. Which would uh, make sense if they reset. If they wanted to keep the, the location of the Amuna secret, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. They would have reset the XO mind and, you know, now it's essentially a blank slate. Yeah. Uh, we know that's not a hundred percent the case, but um, as far as they were concerned, that was enough to protect the the location. Yep. Um, but so we we you know get to the end of the battleground, and Failsafe is now uh, in the you know has investigated the data we have found, and uh, is like studying the radial area as we get closer and closer to the core, and is because it's all being like funneled into the core. Yeah. Yeah, like, it, and she is noting that the radial area is undergoing um, changes the closer we get to the core. Like, the changes are more and more severe. Uh, there's more anomalies uh, within the radial area's data the closer we get. Uh, and that's kind of the purpose of us continuing to burrow is it seems like we're getting closer to a source as yeah. we go down. Uh, say we get a little bit of dialogue from Saint at this point who's still struggling with that idea of like, I'm not the, I, you know, I'm, I'm not the real saint. And there's, there's kind of a, kind of a, a heartbreaking, uh, I, uh, uh, dialogue that's part of the radio message for this week where Saint and Osiris are starting to compare notes on the pasts they remember. Uh, and Osiris, oh, like when they told each other they love them, and yeah, all that stuff, yeah, 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 yeah. Osiris, you know, Saint asks Osiris, like, when when was the first time that that I told you I loved you? I uh, and at first, Osiris is like, we don't need to do this. This is this is silly. Uh, and eventually relents and you know says the story that we all know that we have heard echoed in other lore cards uh, and such of like it was just doing paperwork one day, literally. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Literally. 
He, we're, he did it the way I say it's myth. And we're just random out of nowhere. And yeah, <laughs> screws with his brain a little. Like, what? Like, yeah, go, he was, like, yeah, take that. Now let's go back to work. And the, the Saints just like, uh, or Osiris is just like, uh, what? Yeah. So, you know, this moment of like handing a report and being like, by the way, I love you. And then, yeah, having just to. walks off. She continues about the day. <laughs> Uh, and so Osiris tells that rendition. And what's interesting here is that that is not how Saint remembers it. Uh, when Saint retells his rendition, it was uh, overlooking the the city. Uh, they were in a completely different place. They were like on a balcony overlooking the city. Uh, I think it was sunset or something along those lines. Um, and, you know, Saint they as they were there in in that setting saint said you know i love you and osiris responded in kind immediately uh whereas the osiris that we know uh like it took him some time to to yeah uh vocalize that reciprocation i so even there we're starting to see that like there may be some truth to this idea that this saint is is not you know the real saint quote unquote yeah that there there's something something is going on here. Yeah, and and we have this moment of saint starts to refer to uh starts to to refer to as like his Osiris or yeah. telling Osiris like your saint 14 did this and my Osiris did this and starting to build like a a distinction between between themselves like a almost yeah. like building a wall there a separation yep i uh, and osiris is is kind of of that like it, it doesn't the fine details don't matter like what we feel for each other now like this is this is real this is a you know it, who matter who cares how we got here i uh, and saint saints struggling quite a bit with with that you know i'm feeling like the the imposter syndrome the yeah. the feeling of like i uh, i'm bungie bungie's trying to take away my one <laughs> like i get i get one and bungie's like nope jk buddy sons of bitches hey, you still got eris and drifter that's uh, true that's true that's true i got one they if that gets fucked up next season i'm just gonna <laughs> shoot sorry episode i'm just gonna be pissed no, if anything, it'll get messed up when we go to the Dreadnought, because then Eris will be like, ooh, look, Hive stuff. And Drift's going to be like, god damn it, Eris. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Air, Eris and Drifter's, like, mall date is just strolling through the Dreadnought. I like it. I like it. The one's window shop cream. at all the Hive. One, one's eat, I was going to say, one's eating ice cream, the other one's eating Hive chitin. Like, I'll yep. let you decide who's eating what. <laughs> it could go either way with those two. It could literally go either way. <laughs> there have been dialogues where Drifter's like, you ever cut open a da-da-da and eat blah, blah, blah? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Eric's just like, it's, it's just him. It's not you. This is a Tuesday. <laughs> just deal with it. So, uh, needless to say... Um, at the end of the last battleground, uh, it's implied that uh, um, Failsafe has had the ability to inject like nanobots into the radial area um, and follow the stream, essentially, like follow where the radial yep. area is going and start tracking it to its source. Uh, and so we, um, within, I think it's the next week, maybe two weeks, we get access to the uh, final battleground, um, which is that third layer that takes us all the way down to the core itself. Uh, and the speculation is that if we find where all this radial area is going, it's we're going to find where the conductor is as well. Uh and so we progress down there. We fight um, Antioptes, Hypogene Sentinel, Sentinel, which like these yeah. names. <laughs> okay, these names. You just vomit letters on the screen. Come on. Uh, yeah, though, like, though I, the hap- Hapenoptera, like that. That's a that's the lost city of of Egypt. Is uh, and the only reason why I even have any type of reference for that is because of the movie The Mummy. Um, like that was that was like the the main city that where like everyone was amazed like you found Hapanatra like I and I'm probably pronouncing it wrong too I'm sorry, um, 
but yeah, they're like that was where like the Book of the Dead was supposed to be at, or the the Book of Life, or whatever. Like all that was supposed to be there. So yeah, like it, I I kind of see like where they're pulling stuff from, but come on. Yeah, well, and so uh, Antioptes appeared. I can't find any correlation to that. So that that's just a made it's, up. It's made just up a made thing. up thing. Yeah. Um, hypogene, however, means like underground. So the the underground oh, okay. sentinel makes sure. sense. Um, but they are I. Uh, they are this big cyclops that we're fighting through, and it it is very um, similar to the cyclops that we fight in Curse of Osiris. Yeah. Uh, but by nature of this, this sentinel, I think it was. I think it was Dendron. Yeah, I believe so. Um, so like we've we gather some info from the central, but we're still not quite able to access the like the very core. Yeah. Um. And we so we we enter this this little round of you know need more data need more data. We can't, uh, you know, we, we haven't been able to, to, to break through that final barrier, essentially. Uh, and so there is a plan that is devised to, to finally, like, get us access to uh, how, do we, how do we defeat this barrier? And the plan is, if the saint we have now is a simulation is a copy of our original saint then our original saint's body is still in the infinite forest somewhere still in the vex network and he spent so much time there within the vex that if we were to find him and integrate his memories into our saint that that will reveal enough information that we'll be able to ac- get access to where the conductor is yeah seems plausible and uh we have this uh mission where essentially we are breaking in like we found another access point to the infinite forest through the the vex network um, that is not, uh, the, uh, Mercury, um, since that's not around <laughs> anymore. Right. I can't just go knock on the door, right? Can't knock, can't go knock on the front door. I got to find back doors. Yeah. Uh, and so we find the, the, uh, access to that and we are able to locate that tomb of St. 14, uh, and, Osiris. I still love that space. Oh, it's, like the number it's of beautiful. Like Vex bodies like, that are piled. Like you're literally standing on mounds of Vex bodies. Like yeah, it, Saint did a number. Saint Saint fucked with the Vex enough to where they were just like, okay, this is the, we got to stop this. <laughs> it is environmental storytelling uh, in spades. It is wonderful. Yeah, I I love the way they designed that space. Um, but so Osiris and. Uh, Saint 14 transmat in to the tomb once we have discovered it. And there's a lot of trepidation on Osiris's part of like, we don't know what's going to happen to your mind when you meld yeah. with <laughs> these memories. Um, and you know, like, well, we, we got to, we're just going to find get, out essentially. We're going to get, we're going to get exo billboarding is what the fuck we're going to have. I think that was a worry. Yeah. It was like, that was a genuine, genuine fear there. I think I, but so regardless, Saint, you know, downloads, integrates, whatever weirdness happens between exos in this in this circumstance. I uh, he lives the life of that other saint and has all of those memories kind of merge with his own. Um and thankfully what that does, rather than like further uh, mess with his head is it it brings him to actually a, a point of clarity it brings him to a point of like okay this saint had a different life than i did he he experienced different things but the feelings he had and the motivations he had were still the same 
Like, yeah, I, I am still Saint 14. I still want the same things that this saint wanted that every saint wants. You know, I still have a deep connection to wanting to protect the city. I still have a deep, you know, love for Osiris. Like I, you know, any version of me like a, is still me. Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of like a confirming of, of like individual drives and motives and stuff like yeah. that. Um, and in addition to that, he also via these memories, uh, learns the coordinates that will lead us to the, uh, the core of the Vex network, uh, and the conductor within. Yeah. Uh, and so we, uh, now do a, a mission. Uh, that is, um, us like transmitting through from that, uh, from that space, from that tomb, like back into the Vex network, uh, to follow those coordinates to where the conductor can be found. Uh, we fight off a boss, uh, on our way there. That is the archival mind, um, which makes sense, like. We we accessed yep. the Vex's archival data essentially to find that that original body of Saint Fourteen. I, uh, and after fighting off that boss, we are able to use the Vex gates to arrive at Ness's uh, Nessus's planetary core. I uh, Nessus's Ness Ness eyes Nessus <laughs> <Nessimuses. laughs> Yeah, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> right. Yeah. I. Uh, and I this space is really wild. Uh, is it's so different? It's really cool. It, there, there's basically a mini planet. Down yeah, there. like it's it's very lush. There's lots of like green vegetation. I reminding me a lot of um, uh, Venus. Yeah, in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it it technically has a ceiling, but the ceiling is so high that there's almost like its own skybox before you reach it. Yeah. I like it, it does. It feels like you've stepped into a planet inside a planet, which is, is really cool. Yeah. Uh, and it's all a hundred percent built on Vex architecture. Like everything yep. here was, you know, maybe obviously cause the core of a, a planet or a moon doesn't look like this naturally. Um, but it was entirely oh, sculpted by me. the Vex. Yeah. That's reminding me of the God. I can't even remember what movie it was. All I can remember is the line: "Can I cook or can I cook?" And I think it's Sigourney Weaver. And she, there's she was like, you know, the 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 such and such happened overnight or something. You know, the 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 mitochondria took over and or the the mycobacteria took over and and created the sub cells or whatever. And it's it's a, literally a planet inside of a planet. Maybe that was one of the Star Treks. Maybe it wasn't Scorny. Uh, I don't your know. Guess is as good as mine. <laughs> somebody's somebody's gonna come correct me in a comment somewhere. They're gonna be like, "That was blah 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 blah." I'm gonna go, "Yep, that's exactly what it is." But for some reason, I got it in my in my head. So now I'm now I'm just thinking of like Lakshmi in the back. Can I cook or can I cook? <laughs> like, yeah, that's that's all I've got in my head now. Is that? Uh, so we come to this space, and uh, there is like a river of radiolaria that stems from a pool of radial area in the middle. Uh, and as we approach that pool, we are treated to a cutscene. Uh, in that cutscene, we see the back of the conductor um, who is literally like controlling the radial area to the point where at will can assemble and disassemble different Vex units. Yeah. I, which is is kind of wild, like yeah. I and vex units from we we see that as we approach, there's like nor quote unquote normal vex units. What we what we think of as like the present day vex, I uh, and the conductor like has them dissolve into the radial area pool and then rise, you know, raises them back up and they come up as like very like gilded Vex units. Um, yep. New, new and shiny versions of 
what I think are usually considered the like futuristic Vex. Yep. Uh, which begs the question again, bec- is this why they are, the is way this they are? where those designs came from in the first place? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that, isn't that a janky thought to think of like that, like that all that, all that does honestly to me, all that does is just prove how much the Vex really do exist throughout all time. Yeah. They've shown their future selves to us. Now we're seeing a point where, oh, this is where they were created. This is how they were created because of this X, because we defeated the witness. Now we've got a bigger threat of, of Vex on our, on our hands now. Like we, we caused our, yeah, cool. We made our own fate. We also caused our own fate because <laughs> we're not, we're kind of dumb sometimes. We don't think bigger picture every once in a while, but like, yeah, it's, it was interesting to think of that concept too, of like, is this why future Vex look like future Vex? Because they had this evolution here and now that evolution has taken hold. And that is, that is officially now the new, like, you know, Vex 3.0 or whatever. Yeah. So as we uh, approach and as us, uh, Saint and Osiris, they're all approaching the conductor. Um, and as we approach, I, it is revealed that the conductor is none other than Lakshmi slash Maya Sundaresh. Uh, yeah. And I, I will say... Fantastic voice actor. Oh, very much so. I know I know she's in a bunch of different things. I unfortunately do not have her name at the top of my head, but I, everything she's Excuse me, he everything she's been when in. she talks. Like it, it's so creepy. Yeah, but uh, now th- this was a point of contention um or confusion that i saw uh in a lot of cases um of like well is this because they the visual appearance the the head of the conductor is lakshmi um yep and it is this moment of like but it's maya so why would maya rebuild themselves in the image of lakshmi i and that that is an important distinction this is not the Lakshmi, you know, Lakshmi two that did everything on the tower. This Correct. is, this is presumably this is Maya proper. Presumably the original Maya. I uh, or one of two hundred twenty seven copies of her. Well, it is the Maya from Niamuna. It is the Maya from yep. the Veil containment dialogues. Uh, who you believe that Maya was is a whole nother discussion, but. Uh, it right. is the Maya from Veil vale Containment. Um, and she, I'm assuming, has taken the form of Lakshmi because they, the radial area cannot create organic, you know, tissue. Uh, sure. And, you know, in her head, like, the closest thing she would identify herself as uh, in a machine form would be the XO that, you know, was her, was a copy of her. Sure. Um, but just a very like pointedly, this is not Lakshmi. It's just Maya. Maya's v- interpretation of herself in a mechanical body is that of Lakshmi. Yeah. Just like the Matrix thing, right? Like you look like that in the Matrix because you think you look like that in the Matrix. Yeah. This is just a physical representation of yeah. that. Now there is one thing I do want to bring up uh, that that as a as to the possible identity of this Maya that's standing in front of us, I'm reminded of uh, Enigma Protocol and the taken version of it, the corrupted mm. Enigma Protocol, and there are those same data constructs in there that you can scan, and there get some you get some data corrupted. You wouldn't happen to have those entries on you, would you? Uh, not readily at hand you bum how dare you no yes. how dare uh, i not prepare some the reason... subtly obscure thing <laughs> that you just now thought of <laughs> exactly <laughs> thank you myth going uh, on strike <laughs> no it's that's i guess <laughs> shit program's over <laughs> end of episode end of series end of end of business stories uh no if i recall correctly one of those corrupted entries that was like, you know, data corrupted, blah, 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 referenced uh, either either the 227 copies or specifically MSUN 12. 
What is... For some reason, I'm remembering that. And maybe, maybe, again, I could be crazy. I could be making this shit up. It could be off the top of my head. I don't remember. But for some reason, I remember that being a thing. Because then I instantly started thinking, like, okay, well, if this is the MSUN 12, the same one that was trying to access the Otsot machine, um, or Oxa? Otsot is the person. Oxa is the machine. Right. Uh, through the Scion stuff, that would lead a little bit more, um, uh, I guess, kind of like there's more shit going on here than we than we even we the the player realize. Like if this is if this was MSEN twelve, if that was what, who's accessing the network, then this copy, uh, then then this too is a copy of the original Maya. Um, but again, in in Vex form, because these two hundred twenty seven copies were created by the Vex, they are, it, it, I mean, borderline to the molecule, an exact duplicate of the original, and therefore indistinguishable from the original. So, but again, each one could have different drives, different well, not different drives or different motives, like definitely different motives, or you know, they could have different interactions because the entire team was copied. All five members of the team were copied. Some of them were in the Vault of Glass helping Praetith, which I'm just going to – I'm real quick rant because I know you're still Googling and I know you're still looking for shit. Uh, I am a little annoyed that Praetith wasn't in this entire episode. He was mentioned, though. I, he was? He was mentioned. Okay. That's new. That's – you're going to have to tell me where. <laughs> uh, so – Skip, skipping ahead just a touch, but uh, in the exotic mission, during uh, when you get the secret chest, there are some dialogues that are played. Uh, it had to have been one that I didn't yeah. get, because I only got like six of the chests, or five of the chests, or something. I didn't get all, what, seven? Yeah, I, there there are seven of them. Of course it is seven. It is a fleeting... Of course there's seven. Yes. It is a fleeting mention, but um, in one of those dialogues, they mention... Uh, one of the the 227 copies uh, is like doing a report um meant for other versions of themselves and they uh, yeah. they mention that they have an original that is with their group uh oh and the original would be Praetith cuz he doesn't have he's not a copy yeah. he's only himself oh fuck me that's awesome oh that's that the one the one chest that i missed <laughs> is that one come on <laughs> Come on, Zor, get your game together. This is bullshit. Okay, all right. Well, okay. Well, that's it. That's it. Yay! Yeah. Yay! Um, but no. So I I wasn't able to find transcripts of those corrupted towers. I uh, I don't specifically remember an Mson twelve. I remember that there was like a query into Quaria, um, yep, and and a couple of other things. I uh, like query into Golden Age, query into a few things. Yep. But I don't. I don't specifically recall mson 12 uh, as part of and that. i remember all of those going like data critical or corruption critical yeah. or like it was it was literally eating itself alive again because there's taken in there yeah. like the taken taken inside the vex network is a like it it screws with it horribly because the vex can't they, they don't understand it they don't have a reference of paracausality to like be like they can simulate it sort of but not really. Like if if true paracausality is in there, like it's it it's full data corruption there. So yeah. that's that's where I was curious if uh, if that um, if that reference there uh, made it to where like this this Maya that's standing in front of us now at the end of Act Two really is Mson Twelve. Um, okay. So I but yeah I I don't I know. found some. I don't know if this is all of them. Um, but I. This person on uh, Raid Secrets, uh, 43MO57, so thank you for your contribution. Uh, thank you. They listed out a few of these. They admittedly say they don't believe this is all of them, but uh, they have um, data degradation critical, assert query the collapse, following query the dark age, uh, assert query light bearers the city. Um Basically, trying to learn what's yeah. happening. It sounds like they're trying to learn what's happening since the collapse. Yes, I, I believe so because this Maya, I, you know, entered the network and like kind of disassociated into the network. 
Uh, That's what it sounds like. During, you know, after the the end of the collapse on Niamuna, uh, and has not, you know, isn't up to date with anything that's happened. Uh, yeah. It doesn't even know likely about the warlords or the, you know, the, the traveler putting out the ghosts or anything. Right. Uh, so they have um, query uh, indecipherable mind. Um, and then they have a command to purge queries. So like delete all the hist my, my browsing history, essentially. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and then they have uh, assert query, the taken reference file blade transform. So that's, that's where Quoria popped that's up. That's the, that's Quoria. Yeah. So, but those are all the, the only ones that have been recorded, uh, that I could find anywhere at least. Okay. Then I might actually be crazy and that's okay. Yeah. But, uh, regardless we have Maya wearing the face of Lakshmi, uh, who is the conductor here. Uh, and Osiris and Saint are both kind of like, what is going on? Um, and they even say, like, Lakshmi? And she corrects them, like, no, I am Maya Sundarash. I And then we all run the fuck away. <laughs> eh, kind of, but not quite. I, yeah. Saint advances on her with the perfect paradox saying like, I'm not going to, you know, I know what power you have. I'm not going to let you control the Vex to do what you want with them. Um, and she has a little bit of like villain monologuing here of, you know, I'm, I'm looking back at what we've lost, the collapse, the black fleet, all of that's done. Now we can recover all of the things that were lost to us. I, and I can be the one to to lead us there. Um, and this kind of goes back to those queries. Like she has had to learn of everything secondhand. And from her point of view, perhaps it's like, you know, look how far we've fallen. You know, especially sure. having memories of the height of the golden age. Uh almost almost like a almost looking at, at our existence as a this shouldn't be the way it yeah. is. Like, none of this should have happened. Like, it should have been, we had a golden age. We had everything we needed. Like, this is exactly how it should have been. Yeah. Uh, and she points to, like, Radiolaria is the means to this end, is the means to our next golden age. It represents the smallest unit of consciousness. It can yeah. build things, I you know, destroy things, convert things, Um she references it as C Siva on steroids. Essentially, yeah. Like I think she's looking through it uh, at it with the mind of like, okay, Siva was a programmable nanobot. This is thinking organisms yeah. that I can yeah. not only direct to do things, but they can exceed so far beyond programming because they can form their own thoughts and intentions around how things yeah. should be done, not just how they were told they should be done. Uh, and she goes on to say like each bit of radiolaria is, uh, is allowed to have its own thoughts. And now there is this symphony of thought to be directed at something by a conductor. Hence, the title she has given her. Boom. Um, and she says, you know, essentially Nessus will be converted into her vision of what it should be. Uh, and that'll be the starting point. The radial area she commands will spread all throughout the solar system. And, you know, in, in a way do what the witness was w wanting to do. Essentially like I'm going to rewrite everything in the image that I think it should be in. Uh, yep. Just the means is a little different. Uh, and you see, she's like, shows that she can still exert some level of control over Saint uh, by like making him, you know, fall to his knees. I uh, and you know says, if you stand in my way, then I'm, you know, you, I will break you down and make you part of the building blocks. I uh, yeah of of this world that I am creating i uh, deletion protocol activate yeah she summons a couple of goblins out of her pool of radiolaria and then we go oh fuck and transmat away uh and that's kind of the ending story beat of of act two i uh, i on on one hand overall i like where the story 
has gone up till this point and actually even up through most of act three, this was one of those moments. And it was pointed out by the community as well that like felt weird. <laughs> uh, it, it did. It did. I, I never felt like, like we, the guardian, like this definitely felt like this was something that was happening between Saint and the conductor and that we, the guardian were just kind of like along for the ride. Right. Like we did things to help, every once in a while, but it never really felt like this was happening to VIP 2014. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like throughout most of the rest of destiny, everything that's been happening has felt that VIP 2014, we, the player guardian, the, the one that's, you know, the, the one guardian to rule them all, um, has been impactful and has done something to change the course of history. Um, and this this was one that yeah I I felt like we were we the player were kind of like in the back seat, and it just it was, and there's there's been some moments like this where I feel like Bungie has maybe struggled a touch with the moment to moment power fantasy in gameplay being transitioned into cutscenes that are like lower stakes. Um, sure. Is you know that moment where okay if it was just Saint or Saint and Osiris, I uh, you know Saint's brought to his knees. It's shown that like she still can exert some level of control over him. Okay, he's out of the fight. Uh, Osiris is a lightless you know it is lightless. He's human. He's mortal. He doesn't have the ability necessarily to fight back outside of just a gunfight. And this is you know one dude against uh for vex and presumably more to be summoned probably not gonna not gonna fare all that well yeah so like all of i would have loved to see osiris kind of resert some of his his strand yeah here. like it, that would have been cool to to see him that would have been a neat tie-in to be like like okay you can fuck with shit i can fuck yeah. with shit too like i'm lightless and i can still try it because i feel now granted this, this, osiris has evolved a lot he has um, in his mentality of how he attacks things, um, he's he's not as he's not as like balls to the walls, go 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 go, as he was back in like even even at uh, Lightfall, because um, even at the beginning of Lightfall, he was like, we got to get into Nemo, we got to get to secure the veil, we got to da 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 da. Like yeah. he was very much there, and even then he was. I mean, he had woken up like three months, like not even three <laughs> yeah. months before, and, and like, hey, you're lightless, dude. You're not. You're you're going to die. Like, you can die. And even throughout that season before, uh, with the with the season of Rasputin and and all that, um, even through that, like there were a few times where he was kind of starting to realize it. There's, I remember some conversations between him and Anna of like, hey, your sister's just got to do what she's got to do, or you know, like like. Like I should, I, but I should have, I should have told myself to like slow down and not be so involved with my work. Like maybe you need to do the same and take some time with your sister and stuff. So yeah, it, we've seen an evolution of, of Osiris to be less gung ho, less, you know, balls to the walls. But I still feel like in that specific moment, I don't know that he would have cared. Yeah, like when when like, your partner is like, being he's done everything. Yeah. That's what I say. He's done everything. He literally went into a different timeline or our same timeline. I'm still not fully fully on board with how the whole um time dial thing worked. Uh can't can't really decide whether that was actual time trial travel or like pseudo time travel through the infinite force. Like Again, no matter how it was, he risked everything to get Saint back. Like, he could have been kicked out of the city again. He could have been, you know, disbanded from the, or just, okay. would, would, can you be disbarred from the Vanguard? Is that a thing? I mean, he's I not know. technically a part of it anymore anyway, but. Sure, sure. He's his own thing. But like that, like to go through all that for Saint once and then to hear, like, see that, I, in my mind, he would have snapped and would have instantly just started throwing throwing anything, throwing needles, throwing uh, uh, grapple grenades, anything. Like, I really expected to, to see Osiris kind of just like, fuck this, you are not screwing this up again for me. Like, I will throw myself at it. But again, to, to see the cautionary side of him kind of come forward makes sense. It's just a little, eh, I would like to see a little more out of it. Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose in his mind, he might have gone less to like, you know, eliminate the threat and more to like protect, you know, Saint. Sure. Um, sure. Which all of that, I could see 
going in in any of those directions if it were just Saint and Osiris that were there. Our guardian was there. Four yeah. four goblins was and Ikora a, there? No, not in this one. Um not in that one? But, okay. I was gonna say if Ikora was there, all right. Now we're just calling bullshit. Right, like four like, four goblins and a presumed still like can be affected by space magic conductor. Fix that with a Nova bomb real quick. Have, like Yeah, we could, I mean, not to jump forward, but we Ikora kind of did that. Uh, yeah. Like fixed it with a Nova bomb. Uh, it's like, okay, well. So right. it just it felt odd to hit that that moment and have literally nobody do anything other than just get you know gtfo uh yeah so it was it was a little dissatisfying it was but odd. it was the end of act two you know act three was coming up it was it was kind of a like eh, okay fine like maybe the guardian sure. also was more concerned for the very mortal frail osiris and the like out of commission saint as well <laughs> keep referring to osiris as this frail old he kind of is he kind of is but at the same time like i dare you to go up to tell him that to his face oh, oh, yeah. he'll <laughs> shut you down real quick yeah he'll he'll have none of that but by comparison yeah uh, yeah he's gotta be yeah. but needless to say we we end act two on this like Maya's the conductor. She has this vision of the golden age. Um, and then we, we kind of get into act three and act three was really interesting because we get a, another cutscene uh, that is diving into the rationale of Maya. And we learn that it's not necessarily just her being like, yeah, this golden age, we've lost so much. Like we, things can be so much better. Like that's what she said. And that's kind of her, her reasoning that she's, you know, that, that I think is, is the way she's justifying everything. So be like, look, look at, this is such a grand, uh, you know, endeavor that I am taking. And what, really we learn was happening was she i uh, recognizes that she's been separated from chioma you know that chioma does not exist in the same way i uh, however there are myriads of versions of chioma including the one that followed maya into the vex network on niamuna i uh, within the Vex network still. And yep. really her golden age for, for all her like, you know, grandiose uh, messaging. Maya's idea of the golden age is a world where she and Chioma are together again, but not just that she and Chioma are together again, but she is together with a Chioma that under... I won't say understands like supports her craziness. I uh, yeah. like, she doesn't want someone that is going to be a dissenting opinion. She doesn't want someone that's going to be like, you have become a monster. She wants someone that, you know, she, she well, wants a Harley Quinn to her Joker kind of thing. Yeah. Well, and because like, she's already experienced the, the level of like, you're a monster. Like we yeah. saw that through the veil containment mm -hmm. stuff. Chioma just straight up said like, I don't know who this is. I, this is not my Maya. Like, like even back then, like not knowing that like you know there's copies or what, or not knowing how the copies are interacting with each other or whatever, but like Chiomi Essie back then was like really like the to see Maya discard you know the, oh hey we lost you know thirty exo mines today eh that sucks let's keep keep going with the testing yeah. like in Chiomi's eyes the the original Maya would have seen those as like human beings right like that was the whole reason why Maya stopped working with Clovis was that she recognized those as human beings as as not just a piece of hardware stuff. So yeah, it I it's I can kind of see Maya's side of it of like she's already seen that play out and she's like, "No, fuck that. I didn't like that. So let's find somebody who supports me." That but it's still my but it's still Chiomi. Like that's that's demented. That's fucked up as shit. Yeah. Like and <laughs> but I, but I guess I get it. I mean, I can under I can't condone all of, it, all but of I Act can Three. Go, I was going to say all of Act Three goes really dark. It does really fast. It absolutely does. And I was like, "What the fuck is happening?" 
So, um, so in Act Three, I there's not going to be nearly as many kind of touch points to go over one by one because there's kind of like a few big revelations and then that's that's it. Um, which is not a, a critique; it's just like that. There's some big story beats and that's not a whole lot in between. I, yeah. uh, so we we learn that Maya is not seeking for a golden age for the system and like some level of perfection her version of perfect is a world where she and her idea of a perfect Chioma exist. Uh, yep. And she is willing to let everything else burn or change in the pursuit of that. Yep. And this then gives us access to uh, the new exotic mission, which is Encore. Uh, and through that exotic mission, we are progressing further through the the vex network uh or excuse me through nessus not the vex network um to still kind of following the radial area around. yeah we're, we're following the radial area and we're, we're trying to uncover whatever information we can about uh you know about where maya is located like the methods uh that she is you know enacting these levels of control like uh, we're, we're trying to figure out like okay what what's making her tick what is she what is she doing not just what her stated end goal is but like what is the process she is taking to get there so we can hopefully understand how to combat it sure and uh what we discover is that she at the, the very heart of nessus has a like research lab that she has been you know performing experimentation on uh or at and as we get to that research lab, we discover uh, it is littered with exobodies uh, in mm-hmm. various forms of disrepair. Sometimes it's like just a torso and a head. Sometimes it's a full body, you know, and in- iterations uh, of those. Uh, and what we learn as we inspect some of those different exobodies over the weeks is essentially just, we get little glimpses of times where Maya pulled a version of, of Chioma of one of those 227 into an exobody, like out of the Vex network into an exobody and then interrogated them to be like, are you the perfect Chioma for me? And if there was, if their response was beyond whatever her like, acceptable variation was then she would just immediately kill them and move on to the next that's so fucked up man incredibly so that shit got dark real fucking quick and i was not ready for it like the first one and she was like degaussing i'm like what what are you doing oh god oh god and she like kills her like mid-scream too i'm like oh god budgie Oh God! What is happening? No, the universe is a better place now. We got rid of the witness. All the darkness is bad. Bad things are gone. Like, no. What are you doing? Yeah, it's it's, it's pretty dark in it's there. Not good. Encore is encore is rough. Is is not good at all. And then the worst part is like you have to play that every time. I know you can't just skip it. The, you can't skip it. You have to continually like every time you run back through it. You have to play it. You have to listen to it. And you're just like, oh God. Oh God, what is wrong with these people? It's so bad. Yeah, so we play through this Encore mission. Uh, and pretty much all of Act 3 is uh, iterations of Encore. Uh, yep. Going through and experiencing more and more of these wonderful interrogations. Each each one of them gets worse because like, each one is a new version being deleted. Yeah. And it's just, it's each one is just worse and worse and worse. And it's, it's so dark. It, it is incredibly dark. And there, there's a couple of the conversations that, um, that like stuck in my mind. The, the first one, definitely. Uh, and then there was another one where like she, she asks them different questions. Like, I, one of them was, you know, what did we name our daughter? Um, another one was, I, how did was it like like how did, they, how did what did you call me or something yeah like that? Like, or yeah what what did you call me on on our wedding night something like that um and that one stuck out to me uh because Chioma said that uh she called her uh Suryo, Suryodaya 
Ciodia, I think that's the, the yeah. correct term. I, uh, which translates to sunrise. I, uh, and back in the Enigma protocol, one of the columns yes. queried sunrise, and the response, like the response it got back from that query, was Suryodaya. Uh, yeah. So, like, just another kind of little callback there that if. I don't know that we would have had a reason to connect Maya to Suryodaya other than like Sundaresh is kind of similar. Um, yep. But even, you know, it's just another link of like, yeah, that was, that was all Maya. Uh, yep. But, uh, but so we, you know, play through this a number of times, uh, experience all of these and the Vanguard of course is getting notes on everything we're experiencing as well. And like, Oh God, this is awful. Is bad. Well, we also learned something uh, something really interesting too. Um, not necessarily through Encore, but I think it was like the first week or first or second week through the radio messages, um, the failsafe radio messages. We learned that this Maya has memories of the Kogu. Yes. So she, I, I was kind of surprised that they didn't dive into that more. I was expecting it to yeah. pop up more. But yeah, I think it's either week one of, of Act 3 or maybe the end of Act 2 where uh, one of the radio messages is from Maya and she mentions the the Kogu leader, uh, Taekwal. Was, was it Taekwal? Te- yeah, yeah. And, and says that like Taekwal had the power but not the means to, to you know, exert control because all of the, the Kogu, like, it was very much a conductor chorus. Take call was yep. conducting the fleets uh, through like mind links. So she has access to that. And we theorize that like if the echo of control is made from memories of the races, the witness has conquered, like then it perhaps the echo of control is what's left of the Kogu memories. Yeah. But I don't think it was ever brought up again. <laughs> no, it was in that one little radio message that she starts talking about. It. Like she just she knows them and she she understands them and everything. I'm like, well, what the hell is going on here? Does she have like memories of the witness in her? Is that what's happening now? Which then, I mean, that opens up a big old can of like, what the hell and what yeah. else? Like, does that mean that like all that's in the Vex, Vex network now? Like, obviously the Vex have had interac- interactions with the witness and stuff, not but like. It, it it brings about a whole level, a whole new level of like what is actually happening here? What is going on with this Maya Sundaresh? What what does she have access to? What memories she have? All of that. Yeah, it's it's a it's it was just a really interesting like what the hell moment. Yeah. Um but yeah, so I uh, as we are exploring her uh, you know, getting more of these these interrogations vanguards like putting the pieces together of like okay she's looking for a specific chioma i uh, and they you know they come to the conclusion of like she's she's looking for the chioma from her own timeline like from the one that she personally knows i uh, and they're like okay well what if we find that chioma first and if we find her maybe she can like talk maya down uh it's kind yeah. of the idea uh, fingers crossed and so we um go to veil containment get uh some kind of like signature of chioma or, or uh, some way to track her off those veil containment logs uh and we track her signal through the vex network to find out where she ended up uh and we track her back to one of the destroyed exo bodies in sundaresh's experiment hall I, it's it's so messed up. She found exactly what she was looking. Maya found exactly what she was looking for, and still deemed it not worthy. Yeah, and deleted it and killed it. Like Maya at this at this point, Maya's just fucking batshit crazy now. Like he, even even I think Saint and 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 Osiris come back with like, there's no savior now. I think even Ikora, I think all three of them are on comms yeah. are just like there's nothing we can do now. Like she is, she is so far gone. She can't even see that the one that she was looking for, the one that she loved that told her like, Hey, you are doing bad. You, this is, 
you shouldn't be doing this, Maya. Maya looked at that and said, no, you're wrong. I, this, this, this is me. This is who I am. And then deleted it, like threw her away, threw her own Chioma away, and then just kept looking for another one and just kept going. Like, holy shit, this is dark. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is fucked up as shit, man. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy. Um, and so like off that, that is kind of the final, uh, story, story mission. The final time we run encore for story beats, uh, is, is discovering that like, no, she, there, there's no hope. Like there, there is no, there is no way to talk her down. Uh, there's no one that could talk her down anymore. Uh, and then after, and completing that mission, we, uh, are treated to a, kind of final cutscene. Uh and here it is Ikora and Saint and the Guardian that are facing down uh the conductor, uh Maya. Um and uh you know they're now questioning her like how many had to die for you to find the Chioma you called yours and then once you did you still cast her aside. Uh and she's still very much in denial. She's like no that that was a copy. That wasn't my Chioma. My Chioma would never fear me. My Chioma would understand and embrace all that I'm doing because she could see my genius, essentially. Uh, you, you crazy <laughs> bitch. <laughs> yeah, pr- pretty much. Uh, and Ikora does the little jab of like, oh, splitting hairs to justify murder, are we? we you sound like Clovis. Uh, yeah. Oh, that sent her <laughs> over the edge. That was like to to throw that name out there. I think like that's that's where Maya snapped. Yeah, she she was very like, well, I see. There's no way you'll understand me. It was was kind of her her like oh emotional response uh, in emotional response. How cute, you know. I'm so far yeah. above you. There's no way you'll ever understand me. I uh, and um you know they. Uh, Ikora and everyone makes makes mention, you know, makes moves to be like advance advancing in on her. Ikora like, you know, pumps the shotgun is is advancing in, and she I uh, begins to exert her control. But it's not just Saint that's affected this time; it's everybody. It's yeah. Ikora, it's the Guardian, and Saint. Uh, are all forced to like drop their weapons and start moving towards the radiolaria pool, which tells me that her power has advanced beyond just the control of radiolaria yep. to the control of potentially anything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. If she has control over organic matter, because I mean, obviously, Ikora is our organic matter. Yeah. Um, and depending on your guardian, like for me, I, I was an exo, so I, I, my my warlock is an exo. So like, I was like, okay, that kind of makes sense there. But now that it's like controlling uh, uh, Ikora, that's organic material. Uh, this is bad now. This is officially escalated. Yeah, like we we have we have gotten to a new level of not good. Uh, yeah, but she's you know controlling you all to walk forward and intending for you to like drink from the radial area and transform into Vex. Become one. Oh, it's so fucking creepy. Saint, however, is able to break his hold uh, or break her hold over him. Uh, Sentinel shields up and uh, Captain America is a shield off her dome, which I, you know, distracts her enough that she's unable, you know, she loses control of the other two. I, uh, and Ikora then Nova bombs her ass into the pool yeah. of radiolaria. Uh, Akora, Nova Bomb, go. <laughs> say, which then a weird thing happens. Yeah. So this this is everything up until literally that point. I would like, and even that point of like Nova Bomb, go. All right, neat, cool. Like now we're gonna have a big old fight. But then we don't. No. So Maya just kind of like data lattices up and like dissolves into the radiolaria, and now she's just chilling in the vex network and we're fine with that yeah we we have a very like there's an odd moment um so she's kind of floating in the pool as she's dissolving into it saying uh you know perhaps in time you'll see you know perhaps in time you know my vision will become clear to you 
I uh, nope, you still crazy bitch. And she just kind of like floats down the the river, the Radiolaria River. Yeah. Uh, and our guardian and Ikora and Saint are stuck standing there, going, "Oh, well, I guess she got away." And then it just Bye. ends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This this is the one time, like again, throughout this episode, like everything was building to something, and this this is where again, I I know the community's kind of. There, the people have been poking left and right as, as as the same thing. This is where it got really odd for me. Like it didn't make this ending did not make sense to me. I've been trying to make sense of it because um, I, I I just was able to to play it um, what two days ago. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so like it it's still kind of really fresh in my mind of like what happened at that at that cutscene and then even the dialogue afterward. Where like you go back to the helm because there's like some finish up dialogue yeah. where like you know you go back to the helm and they kind of discuss like she's still in the network she's still out there it's she's still a threat like and so it it it, it just it was really odd to me like I thought we were really building up to this like okay we're gonna kill her and then you know now we the 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 vanguard or we the the guardian now have the echo of command. And we're gonna need to like secure this somewhere and like lock it up in a in a hidden vault somewhere, you know, one of one of Icora's hidden hidden vaults or somewhere in the the Vanguard archive or something, and study the piss out of this thing. Nope, she dissolves into the radial area with the command and just is there. Yeah, it, and that's that's it. We just kind of like accept it, like. And that. I mean. Yeah that that was I, I, that was the biggest thing for me, like there's zero closure there's yeah we we talked about it uh you know off off air a little bit as um as we were just kind of reacting to to what had gone on we we're like we're in the same spot we were at the beginning yeah. of the episode <laughs> like nothing nothing in the bigger picture in the bigger world of destiny has changed there are still compelled vex like the, maya is still there like from what we did and everything that we did to fight to get to this point, I mean, I guess the only thing difference is there's a bunch of dead Shiomis now. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's the only true difference between the beginning of this episode and the end of the episode. And it, it's, it's a little disjointed. It's, I, I, I'm scared now again, you know, me, as soon as shit starts going sideways in destiny, I start getting scared. So I'm, I'm concerned uh, and worried. I'm going to use all the words. Uh, I'm not gonna say I'm mad. I'm not. It's 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 like it's like it's like when you're getting yelled at by dad, right? Like, or, <laughs> or, or you did something like I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. Like that's like I don't know. I was I was really expecting some big epic battle with Maya. Of like she starts con- exerting control and like you start doing button presses or something to like break out of it or some shit. Like or I, or a saint comes over and like puts his hand on your shoulder and like steadies you or some shit. And you're just like, Oh, that's right. I am real. And he like reassures you like they had something and, and then just let it go. Like, like just kind of like, like didn't do anything with it. So I'm, I'm still a little confused at the end of this episode of like, are we concerned about this? Are, are, you know, are, are we supposed to be looking for this threat or is this, is this the new, but, I guess on the flip side of it, again, thinking back to our comment earlier of, well, we now know where the future Vex design comes from. Maybe that really is the thing. Maybe that, yeah. like, Maya is in control of future Vex now, like, and this is the thing. Like, this is how the Vex are able to, to get to their end goal, is through use of Maya, which, it, it's it's like a parasitic thing. Like, each one is feeding off the other one. Maya's using the the Vex to get to her, you know, perfect reality or whatever, and the Vex are using her to to evolve and to actually get to the point of like everything is Vex. Like, okay, we have we've now figured we've now solved the equation type thing. So I I could kind of see it going both ways, but at the same time, it I like what you said. We we didn't get that closure at the end. Now I'm just kind of left here questioning. Like, uh, are are we supposed to be scared? Are we supposed to be concerned? Are we? Yeah. Are we worried? And I, like, I guess that's that's my biggest uh, my biggest gripe and and kind of what I I feel like uh, is the biggest downfall of this this narrative arc is like you don't leave like it'd be one thing if 
you left the the ending of this narrative arc and were either i uh, excited or felt like you know fulfilled so you're like yeah we messed them up and we we you know saved everything and the vex are you know maybe still a problem but not you know the problem they could have been or even if it sure. had been intentionally like you know maya did some shit and got away like yeah, you know, I I but got away in a way that she's not in immediate threat still. Um sure. you know, maybe we wrestled the the echo of control from her, but she escaped and now we got to always watch our back kind of thing or you know. Yeah. Or maybe we defeated it's, that it's, version it's, it's, it's that. It's, of her. It, it's that thing right there, right? Like the the idea of like we got something out of it even if she did escape. This version of it is she escaped and we didn't get anything out of it. Well, it and it's it's we're left at the end confused, like yeah, as to like you know say well, and and fail safe are are like yep, I guess we're done. Good job, everybody, and and I'm standing there going like no, we're not. <laughs> no, not good job, not mission accomplished. This isn't happening. Or like what you were about to say there, like maybe we defeated one copy of her, right? And now there's now there's multiple copies. Like I mean, there's 227 of yeah. her. We know Clovis killed one of them. Oh, I. Not Clovis. Elsie. Uh, Elsie kind of killed one of them there. Like some of them might have died. Like I, I, but some of them are fighting in the Vex network to help Praetith. Like, so not all of them have been like fully corrupted. Like we even theorized on that. Like there might be corrupted versions of Maya floating around, but like it just, it felt weird. Yeah. It, I, didn't, I didn't know what to do at the end of that. Yeah. Like, like I, everything. I understand wanting to set up some story threads to, to pull on later sure. and keep people, you know, invested in like, oh, I, you know, that's a thing now that we're going to need to, you know, like Shivu Arath. Like, Shivu Arath's still out there. Sure. We're going to have to deal with still her at issue. some point. But, but I still felt like I got closure. Right, out there of was that. a reason why she's not knocking on our door right this second. And, the yeah. only reason that we've kind of been given that Maya isn't knocking on our door still right this second is because she decided not to question mark. <laughs> that's, that's the weirdest part, right? Like, okay. Ikora, presumably one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful guardian in existence, um, threw a Nova bomb at her. And that was her excuse to leave. Like, I, I I'm not I'm not following the logic here, yeah. right? Like I'm not following the the level of like, okay, that's why she was scared. Like we didn't do anything crazy to like scare her off. Like we didn't like yes, okay. I guess it's a little bit of a two part thing. One, yes, Saint showed that he can break free of her control. Okay, so if Saint can do it, presumably anyone can do it. Yeah which means that the echo of control is not as powerful as we think it truly is. Okay. I'll I will I'm not accepting it. I'm not going to say I accept that. <laughs> I will I will put that as a point of like okay, maybe this is the idea that was being that 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 was that was trying to be sought after of like yes, the echo of control is bad. Maya in control of the echo of control and her idea of trying to create a perfect existence that is also bad. But we as as individuals or 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 the Vanguard or the you know VIP 2014 or whatever were able to do something to like lessen the hold of it and lessen the immediate threat of it. But really all it was was Saint kind of snapped out of it somehow and again just somehow like the light in his helmet turned back to purple and that was it like oh okay I suppose, like, maybe he's been messed with enough that he finally accepts that he can assert his own will and that, you know, he can't be controlled. Like, no one can control him. Like, okay, you, you're, getting, you're getting real thin here, buddy. Like, you're getting real thin ice here of, like, plausible things that are happening going on here. And then to Ikora, just be like, Nova Bomb! And then Lakshmi go, oh, damn, you beat me. Yeah. Okay, see you next time. Yeah, it Bye. just... <sighs> And I, I don't, I don't want to harp on it for, for too long here. I'm but. not, I'm not, that's, that's the big thing is like it, I, to put out, like we felt dissatisfied. We're, we're concerned for the next yeah. episode. Like that, that That's kind of where it, where it lands. And, and I know, you know, we, we try and find the silver lining as much as we can. And I, I will say yep. beyond the very final ending and a few moments here and there, you know, I pointed out the end of act two, 
I, yeah. but over, overall, like I was really, I was quite engaged with the narrative of this. Like I, I feel yeah. like until that moment, the story being told was, was a good one. I, yeah. like I said, when it went real dark in act three, I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Is like I was genuinely scared. Like I was freaking out. I was like, this bitch is evil. This, this she is crazy. We got to stop her. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like they, they did a good job of getting you riled up and, and motivated for like up. what's yep. going on. And it just the and I that made the ending sting all that much more because yep. our guardian didn't do anything, our actions didn't matter, and it felt very it felt very very wow. like Saturday morning cartoon. Yeah. Sure. It, it felt like the story didn't know how to end, and so it did it in such a way that it made the the viewer feel like like we're supposed to be stupid, you know. Will Will Icor ever recover from this? Will Saint ever see the the, the his true self? Find out next time on Destiny Ball Z. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's so that's exactly what happened here, and it was it was again a little flat, but. I could see where they're trying to do something to be like set up a future thread of like, okay, now we've got something we can pull on later yeah. on. It could have been handled better. That's neither here nor there, but it's, that's, that's what it is. That's what we have. Yep. But so overall that, that is uh, the end of the main story beats. Um, there is a epilogue, uh, technically like an epilogue quest. You go through encore again uh, and you investigate, um, some anomalies that have appeared and all of these anomalies are uh, little bits of memory from Maya and Chioma uh, that, that are like happy memories that are during their time where they were, you know, on the same page and one of them was not psychotic. Uh, yeah. Uh, additionally, Encore has a whole bunch of secrets like the Encore mission, although we are I think I think it was really well. Oh, done. I think so too. I think we're asked to run it maybe a few too many times just to do story yeah. stuff, but yeah. uh the the mission itself really really awesome. Lots of cool secrets there. Uh the exotic at the end also quite fun. Uh so like no really no complaints there. Um but some of those secrets also give you uh the those seven secret chests give you little dialogues uh that are little snippets from the various uh, simulation teams of Maya, Chioma, the rest of the Ishtar group um, that are spread throughout the network and they're like leaving messages for one another. Yep. Because it sounds like they know that the Chiomis are being hunted. Yeah, like they they have identified that like, hey, Chiomas are going missing. Some Something's yeah. not right here. Uh, and at, it doesn't seem to be at any point that they identify what is happening uh, but they they identify like Chiomas are going missing, um, you know. They're setting up like kind of kind of meeting points of like okay, meet at this simulation that has the pink sky, uh, or yep. you know this, you know this planet that is uh, you know covered in bismuth. Like they they it, it it was really a cool little bit of world building to be like these teams are still in the network working together like setting up meeting it, points uh within these simulations like that was neat it did the thing that i love about destiny where it makes the game feel like it's still alive in the background yeah like it's still there's still stuff happening there even when i log off and and go to sleep like it's that that is stuff like that is fantastic yeah yeah so again there there are there we're not going to be all negative we, we never are there are definitely some really cool positives here um, but yeah, but yeah, that's the, that's the season. Yeah. That is, that is episode echoes. Acts one through three, but don't be disparaged. There is still more stuff that we're going to cover because there's a whole lore book with this thing. There's a nine page lore book, mm -hmm. um, called polyphony, Paul, polyphony. Sure. Paul, Paul, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, yeah, there's a lore book there that uh, we're going to read through that as well. Um, there's all sorts of cool little lore entries on uh, tons of the gear and the, and the guns and stuff. There are like things that are happening throughout the season. So we wanted to like we wanted to like tell the story of the season. So we got kind of like a baseline of like, hey, this is the season. 
the our next couple of episodes are going to be diving into the lore entries on the on the gear and the guns and the lore book itself. Yeah, so you have those to look forward to. I uh, maybe it'll flesh out some more of the the details of things um, that we experience throughout the story itself. I uh, maybe they will explain the whole echo command. Maybe so. Thing. Maybe so. That that would be neat. Maybe they give us a little hint as to like what maya is gonna do next or why she's laying low or you know who knows but uh yeah. but yeah so regardless if you liked what you heard with this episode uh, and you want to support us in some way best way to do so is leave a uh comment or uh, a rating on your platform of choice uh you can reach out to us twitter at missing stories um youtube.com slash at missing stories missing stories at gmail.com i spotify now also let you leave comments so you can leave stuff there if you so choose i uh, and you may hear yourself as a future shout out which speaking of we have a few to go say, through are we gonna tonight are we gonna do a shout out or two i know we're running a little long on this one but uh, yeah we'll, we'll get a, a yeah. few in here um so the first shout out here comes to us from spotify uh comes to us from matthew uh, who says, uh, in regards to our uh, Dynasty Part 1 episode, um, who says, wondering how you guys are in, uh, enjoyed the exotic mission this week. Uh, I had a great time with it. It was so creepy and fun, and it made me excited for stuff coming. Do you guys think we could possibly get a Fallen Guardian soon? Just a crazy idea. Hope your week goes well. It's not not out of the realm of possibility. Yeah, I the elixir, the, elixir, the house of lighters. The I mean, they they exist. It's a thing. Now the big thing is for it to be classified as a guardian, it would have to be a fallen with a ghost. Right. That's that's the big thing. Is is the traveler or the not the traveler the ghost as it's going through looking for something to res would have to deem it, you know, have the qualities of a guardian and res it. The big issue. I see now with that idea is the ghosts have now the the purpose of the ghosts have already been have officially been fulfilled. Right. The witness is dead. The witness is no more. The idea the again this is neither confirmed or, or anything like that. We don't know the true purpose of the traveler releasing the ghost. We've always theorized that it's been to raise an army. That army is now no longer needed because the big threat that's there is gone. So on the one hand, yes, totally possible. On the other hand, I'm starting to lean more towards not likely because the the role of the ghosts have been fulfilled. Yeah. Now I'm of a similar mindset. So yeah. Yes and no. Yeah. Yes, cool. No, probably not going to happen. Yeah, I I wish it would. Uh, it likely wouldn't be like a playable character, even if it did. It'd be a you know an sure. NPC because uh, I imagine there's there's more things they're going to work on before it's creating animation and models and all of that for Elixir player <laughs> How characters. How armor stretches on yeah. Elixir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's a cool idea, and I do hope it happens at some point in the future. Sure. Um, and as far as how we enjoyed the exotic mission, uh, we. Talked about that a little bit Fantastic. already, but yeah, we we quite enjoyed it. Two thumbs up. Uh, uh, next one here also coming to us from Spotify. Uh, this one from Seamus says uh, another great episode, guys. Uh, you were talking about disciples and dissenter statues controlling the pyramid ships, uh, and this gave me an idea. There's no statue in Rulk's pyramid ship, which is why it's stuck in Savathun's throne world. Savathun hid the statue away on the moon, which is the K1 anomaly. So the witness had no control over the pyramid. Oh, shit. Which would keep Rolk trapped with the upended so that the player could later defeat Rolk and destroy the upended later as part of one of her plans. Uh, yeah. Dude, that. Like, that's that's a cool. I, I like the theory for sure. Um, I mean, that's. So, I mean, thinking on that, like, yeah, if 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 the statues are the connection to the pyramid and how the witness can exert control over that pyramid ship or or even see into it or see through the eyes of it like how would the witness even know 
that Rourke, like like if that was true and there was a statue on Rourke's mm-hmm. ship, then the witness would have known that Rourke was being trapped there by Sathun. Yeah, that would make sense because because he sent he sent Rourke specifically to go watch her, and then she was like, "Ha ha, got you, bitch!" <laughs> yeah, and trapped him. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, yeah. And then with possibly the statue being separated from the ship, and then being the K one anomaly, might be why it it couldn't communicate effect man this this has some legs it does i i yeah like there are definitely some some really cool ideas there because i'm trying to think of like originally i thought like the k1 anomaly was linked to nezarex and for it to be on the moon was just like oh it fell out of the ship when it when it crash landed there or whatever but like that was that was one idea but thinking of that when we enter there is a statue. Yeah, when we enter, we to go get right the up artifact. to it and get the fucking ball. Yep. That's right. That's the one Eris strokes and is like, "I've got stasis now." <laughs> That's right. Oh my god, there's totally a, a statue in that one. So yeah, I'm. This is starting to become more and more plausible. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. You're onto something. Definitely a possibility. Now we we don't necessarily have any of the connective tissue lore wise to like explain why Rulk was near the moon, why did Savathun pick the moon? Like that bit is still not there to like really connect the sure. dots, but the idea of it uh, I think is sound for sure. Um I'm keeping it as headcanon until proven otherwise. Yeah. So I I I think that's a good theory. Thank you for sharing it with us. Uh, I like it. Absolutely. All right, one more. Okay. Uh so our final shout out for this episode then um also coming to us from spotify you guys have been going crazy over there uh i love it says hey myth and zor uh i just wanted to say i love your podcast and it's one of the main things keeping me excited to continue going back into the game and exploring the more intricate details of the world keep up the awesome work well thank you that's what we're here for yeah uh that's what uh, destiny is so much more alive than than at surface level because of all these little stories. Again, like I said, the, the whole idea that like um, there, there's a team of, of, of I was presumably 227 teams of uh, Ishtar groups just running around trying to save each other, trying to stop Chiomis from dying. <laughs> like, right, and that, that there's that that's neat. level of communication between them to exist, to, to establish that Chiomas are going missing. Yeah. Like, the the yeah. fact that they they are like their own little investigative network within themselves yeah. like that that's just that's that's, that's super cool a really neat idea and that there's a prey to throw around with one of them uh yeah <laughs> like yep i've got to find that chest now i've got to find that entry yeah so uh so no i as much as we have some points we'll gripe on because they they frustrate yeah. us a bit uh overall like the storytelling is still is still wonderful and still very I, good. Still very well. I can done. only hope that we see more and more of it uh, into the into the future here. And I I am quite excited for episode Revenant uh, is the next one. Um, that is the one that is all scorn themed, and they kind of gave us the tease of like you're going to be a vampire hunter. Is the the idea as they were like building the systems in it. Uh, so like all of that sounds really, really cool. And I cannot wait to see it. Yep. All right. Um, oh, I know exactly who I'm going to thank. Um, whatever movie that was that I referenced (laughs) earlier. I don't, I, for, again, for some reason I've got it in my head that it's Sigourney Weaver talking to, and again, in my head it's Brandon Frazier, but the more I think about it, the more I think it really is. A Star Trek movie. I think it's one of the old original Star Trek, like one, two, or three, maybe Wrath of Khan. I don't know now. That's gonna screw with me. I'm gonna have to Google this afterwards. I know if I Google like "Can I cook?" or "Can I cook?" like it's gonna bring it up instantly. <laughs> so for all the comments on the end of this video that are gonna be like, "Oh, it's blah 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 blah." Yes, I I recognize that now. Unfortunately, my brain is super shitty because now the only version I can think of it is is the Family Guy version where Brian is dating um, the girl from the hills 
and she's like super genius smart and she takes him down to the basement and they play that scene out and she and Brian's like oh my god like he's freaking out because she's smarter than him and yeah so now I've got that playing in my head uh so yeah. for for yep. what it's worth just to end the suspense for everybody did you google uh, it god damn it <laughs> when, when i google can i cook movie dialogue uh it comes up with star trek to the wrath of khan i knew it son of a bitch because they're on the planet that yep yep i knew it it's not sigourney weaver either though is it uh no it's a dr carol marcus is the character dr carol marcus is the character yeah. i knew it i freaking knew it Thank you, Myth. You're welcome. I, that was that was gonna bug the shit out of me. And now, now all of you don't have to leave comments, <laughs> or you can make fun of me for forgetting that it was right. God, yeah, you can make fun of me for that. I'll, I'll accept it. All right. Uh, anything else, Myth? That's it. All righty. Well, then, from all of us, Lord Daddies, to all of you Guardians out there, we'll see you next time. You found your people. Guardians do love their myths and stories. 